thank you so much for showing up today to make some art. I want to first thank Catharsis Media, who's recording these videos, APS, and to Any Given Child for making this possible. We just believe that making art is so fun and so cool and so helpful during these times when we are still kind of stuck at home and not getting to see as many friends as family that we would love to. So here we go, let's get started. First of all, my name is Shelly Michelle and I am a local artist and art educator here in Albuquerque. Um, I love to do mixed media art, but today we are going to do still life, which does involve collecting some materials. So what we're gonna be doing today is using paper and pencil to um, create a simple drawing. We're gonna look at light and shadow, line quality, um, composition, where the light's coming from. This is a concept or this is a project that is really best probably for um, children who are fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders, but third through fifth could join in. And um, it's just great to practice your drawing observational skills. So moving forward, I'm just gonna um, list some things that you would maybe want to go collect. And that would be, like I said, pencil and paper. That's the minimum. Um, and then color pencils would be fabulous. Also, some people like to erase. So an eraser, uh, a pencil sharpener to keep things sharp and pointy. And the fun part is to go and collect some of your favorite things, things that are meaningful to you, like maybe a picture of someone, um, something that a person has given you, trinkets from different trips. Um, and here we're thinking about size of things. So some things maybe will be bigger. So sometimes like fruit or vegetables, um, and then maybe something small like a stone. And we're also thinking about different textures so to make the composition interesting. So I would say collect between um, four to eight objects and maybe you'll just end up using like five of them, but you'll kind of have a repertoire of things to choose from. Um, fabric can be really fun, seashells, things with different patterns and some things that are smooth and don't have any pattern on them. Again, to create this like contrast and interest within the composition. So, um, Go gather those things and then meet me back and we'll get ready to get started. So welcome back. Hopefully you have found some cool things that are going to be interesting to draw and you have your pencil and paper and you're ready to get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. Hopefully you had some fun scavenging around your house for some cool objects. And we're gonna get started um, first with drawing. So you can put those objects to the side and we just need a piece of paper and a pencil. Make sure that it's sharpened. And um, we're gonna just practice doing some line quality stuff first and some shading. Um, so one thing that's interesting about a pencil that we don't think about a lot is you don't always have to have the same weight. And so start by making a line, a straight line pressing hard and then loosen light in your grip and maybe the pencil starts to wiggle and wander and just try out different weights and different directions. So this is experimenting with line quality and also a contour line. So the contour line is what's going around a shape, describing the shape of something. And when we outline something really hard, it becomes flat. So when we're trying to describe something in reality, when it starts to curve or turn or it has more lights up, more light on it, then the line gets lighter. So just play around making some different lines. Maybe think about some of the objects that you have chosen and looking at parts of their shapes and just letting the pencil kind of wiggle and move around. And you can kind of move around the page. So there's some line quality warm up. And then the next thing we're gonna do is do a kind of a gray scale, which is we're gonna start with dark and go to light and then go back to dark. And so it's kind of a shading technique. So everybody does things differently. We all, we all have our own way of mark making. So just start whatever feels natural and fill up a space with darkness. And then as you move away from that darkness, again, lighten that touch, lighten the touch of the pencil on the paper and what's happening is there's less graphite on the paper and so more of that white paper is coming through and try to see if you can get it almost super light like there's and then there's um no pencil and that's our whitest 
light is light, and then we're gonna try and practice going back to the darkest part. And this does not have to be perfect, we're just having fun, right? And sometimes I do this in different ways. So we kind of have like this spectrum from dark to light. Um, another fun way to do this and try it out is let's try some cross hatching. So cross, hatch, cross hatching is individual lines right next to each other. And again, the more, the closer these lines are to each other, the more we're blocking out the white of the page. So this is one direction and then the same thing. And then when we want it to get lighter, guess what? We're going to leave more space in between the lines. And then we're going to go the other way and begin to make the lines closer together and heavier. And then the cross hatching is actually we're going to go back over it in that opposite diagonal. So I'll start from this side. And again, this is like fun. This is just a warm up. It's like when you do sports and you like jog around the field or something um, or jog in place or do some push ups. We're basically just doing that to get ready to do some longer drawing. And so you just cross back and forth again, leaving space when it's lighter and then closer together as it gets farther away. And then let's just try one more thing. Let's look at an object that we picked that has some texture on it. Um, I'm gonna look over here at this uh, thing from nature. It's natural and it has like little kind of seed balls on it. And same thing, when those seed balls are closer together, it's gonna be darker and then they spread apart. So just try making texture with a different stroke. Could be pointillism, dots, or it could be actual little shapes. So I'm gonna do little circles and put my circles really close together using a heavier hand. And then when I want them to appear lighter, I'm lightening my touch and I'm moving them farther away from each other. And then maybe I'll combine the line quality, warm up, and I'm just gonna do a few more of these little texture balls here. And so now our hand and our mind is kind of warm up and we're getting in the groove of starting um, to think about making a composition in our drawings. So you can leave this too close by if you'd like to kind of just inspire you, but we'll put that to the side and then we're going to arrange our objects. So as I had suggested to maybe grab a bunch and then we're gonna pare it down. So here's a time where you can, um, I'm gonna use these ones right here that the ones that I chose not to use for my final composition, but I'm gonna show you as an example. And I thought about something like different shapes. So this one is smoother and round, so it'll be interesting to draw with the light. And when we're doing our composition, maybe I'll omit because these are pretty similar and to have that in the composition might not be quite as interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the pomegranate, put the baseball to the side. Um, something to think about too is um, what's gonna be the ground plane? Is there gonna be pattern on it? That will be a little bit more challenging, might also be more interesting. So just thinking about having something, maybe just a piece of paper or a piece of fabric on your table. So it gives you something as a starting point. And then we wanna think about layering things in space. So something is in the foreground. I'm gonna put the smaller thing in the foreground. I'm gonna try and cover up my little burn mark on my pot holder. But so I'm gonna put this in the back and then I'll put this weird little fun little mushroom in front. So we're creating a foreground, middle ground, background. And just the relationship, that's something really important when we're making a composition um, is the relationship of things. And these guys are kind of similar, but I'm going to cross them a little bit. And then you can even think about like laying things down on the ground. And here's just like, you're just trying it out. So I'm just gonna do a little cross here, this. Maybe I'm gonna omit this, this is too much similar. So I'm gonna go down to three is my example. So then here we go and you can see these things are in relationship. So then the next thing, once you have a composition that you're happy with, where things are in front and behind each other, we're gonna think about a light source. So you can sit close to a window, you can um, use a lamp, uh, like a reading lamp and put it close. Even the um, light, the flashlight of your phone you can use because the stronger the light source is, then it's gonna create more interesting um, shadows. 
a very light spot and then a dark spot in the shadows. So here's an example of a composition. Once we have our composition, we're gonna bring back a piece of paper and do some thumbnail sketches. So we'll put our composition in a way that um, is an interesting starting point. Leave that there and then, so a thumbnail sketch is a tiny little sketch. I'm not, I don't like to do in the size of my thumbnail because it's way too small for me, but the idea is it's a small drawing and something that's quick. And so one thing too to think about is we have um, landscape compositions and then we have portrait compositions and maybe try one or two of each. So oftentimes I'll create a portrait um, composition frame, which is the one that goes up and down. It's like a standing up rectangle. And then one that is a landscape laying down rectangle. And so I have my little spaces that I'm gonna draw in. And then similarly, you can kind of make that frame with your finger and see what you wanna put in the similar space. So, and here's where we just make big shapes. So, and then think about two cropping things out. You don't have to fit every single part of each object in the composition. You can kind of blow it up or maybe you wanna make it like it's far away. Depends on kind of like what, what your concept is. So here I'm gonna crop out a bunch of this pomegranate. Like it's just bursting into the composition and then the mushroom is peeking and then our little homie brontosaurus guy is looking away. And so the way things are organized is gonna make our eyes go in different ways. And you can see I'm not looking too much at perfection here. I'm just looking at what an interesting composition is. Duck bill and always looking at the relationships. And then too, like this little um, fabric that I have here, this can be an interesting thing to direct the eye. So here's one, and then maybe you wanna just do a quick, where's the shade? So there's some shade coming in here. Here's a couple patterns, and then blocking out behind our brontosaurus with some dark. So my pencil's getting not very, uh, it's getting dull, so I'm gonna switch. But there's one quick um, thumbnail sketch and then I'm gonna do one more just to show you. So here's where you can move your composition around. That's the cool thing about art. You don't have to stay stuck with something you don't like, you know, and you can try things out. So it's all about just, just the process. This is like a creative process. So maybe I see a part that I really like, like there's this really cool shadow and I just wanna zoom in on that. You know, you don't have to feel like you're, like again, like locked into anything. So here's a big swoop. And then here is the pomegranate and the mushroom. And see, I want the mushroom to be covering. And so this could be a thing where it's like kind of a mystery, like what are these objects? I'm gonna use black. And here's like a fun part where you see where the shadow is kind of one of the most interesting parts. But again, you can use those that cross hatching that we were working on when we got started to create this dark. And then here's some texture in our mushroom. <laughs> and we get, in doing our thumbnail sketches, we get more familiar with what we're drawing. And then we're gonna see that the mushroom is in the front and then the pomegranate is in the back. And then, um, yeah, and you can do this as many times as you want until you feel like you found a composition that you're happy with. I did a couple um, last night when I was preparing for my lesson, as teachers, art teachers do. Um, and so, yeah, here's um, a couple more that I did. And so I sometimes will do four or five different um, thumbnail sketches before I decide what my, my next, what, which composition is really gonna be interesting for me to spend time putting the details in and really becoming familiar with. So now we're gonna get started uh, with our final drawing. And so if you need to take a break, feel free to take a break. Um, otherwise, we're gonna grab a piece of paper and I like to make a frame within the, the picture plane. Kinda helps me keep things um, organized in order and just makes a nice frame around it and so this is where you decide are you going to do the 
the landscape or the portrait, depending on what you found out in your thumbnail sketches. And so I just make a drawing line around. And it just kind of helps to put something on the page to help get us started because sometimes a blank page can be a little bit intimidating. So here's my picture plane and this is the composition that I decided previously that I wanted to work with. And so when I'm getting started, I will frame it out and use my pencil as kind of the frame edges and decide what's going to be cropped in and out. I, I'm not going to have my whole feather in the picture, for example, or that whole plant in the picture. And so I look at what is going to be my focal point too. And sometimes the focal point will be the darkest part or the lightest part or the object that is the most meaningful to you. So I'm going to have, this is Frida. So I'm going to have her kind of right, she's going to be right about here. So I'm going to kind of just start to define where things are. And oftentimes I'll find where the middle point of the composition is. So for me, it's going to be right around here where the top of the compass is. And so I'll just kind of make that mark if you want to draw a really light line through that helps you remember. And then I just start looking at the big shapes. And when you have set up your your light, as you can see here, this was really cool and dramatic. And so that shadow is going to help the eye go across the whole um, composition. And just like we did with the line quality in the warm up, um, you just kind of can start light in the beginning. So we're not committing big dark shapes in the beginning. And just remember that everybody has their own style and it doesn't have to be realistic. It could be completely stylized and expressive. So don't worry about making it exactly what it looks like if that's not your thing. And also a little um, note as an artist is you can also decide like maybe I want the feather to be overlapping somewhere where it's not overlapping. Um, so you can just make that happen. That's another cool thing about art is you can kind of make the magic happen however you want it to. But since we are looking at um, observational drawing, which is really good for hand-eye coordination, it's also good for calming the nerves. Um, just to like look at something and get to know it better. It's a very like calming practice. And just remember when, for me, the shadows are really kind of important in, in this composition. And so when we are doing the shadows, they will have softer lines than the objects. And that's what's, and they'll definitely kind of get abstracted the farther they move from the light source. When it's closer to the light source and the object, you'll have a, a darker, more defined line. And then when it moves away, it um, diffuses and the line is lighter. Like when we were doing our warm ups, we use less pressure on the paper. And 
And just think about using your pencil in different ways, holding it. Um, so here I'm going up and down and then sometimes I'm crossing. And that's kind of what is, that's what's defining the shapes and it's uh, making the drawing more dynamic. So once I have the large shapes lined kind of placed in, I'm gonna start looking for where the darkest dark is. And so you can squint your eyes, and when you squint your eyes, then you see where the dark parts are. So I see this um, stem within the bottle where all the stems are close together. And then we just block those in and we just continue building the detail. And then the hair on the picture, the dark hair. The clock or the compass face, dark. And just always looking relationally at things. And that's how we continue to develop the composition. And something too to consider is that I find it interesting when the whole composition isn't equally treated with the same amount of detail. A lot of artists do do that, but especially for our purposes, if you're going to spend an hour or so, maybe a couple hours if you come back to it and work on it over time, um, it can be interesting to the focal point put a, more detail in it and then as things move away from the that focal point, there's less detail. Just something to think about. But as you can see here, when you put a dark dark um, right next to the lighter light, then that's going to make it pop out. So I'm pressing really deeply on my paper with my pencil. And then the lighter touch. So here within the shadows, it's really 
uh, opportunity to look uh, at the different quality of light and that really light, light touch that can be translated onto your page. And, um, and then even going over parts of the shadows, darkening them a little bit. If you've used a lot of shadow work in yours, even in the objects, just really looking. The more we look at something, the more we understand what's happening on it. So just taking the time just to look at that grayscale of the lightest lights and then moving into the darkest darks and all the way across those grays. I am using kind of a blue grayscale here, but I like to use different uh, materials when I draw, like a pencil or a colored pencil or a Sharpie. Um, and I switch it up a lot just because each tool has its own unique quality. And also just using the white of the paper in your advantage. So leaving, making choices of where to leave uh, parts of the white paper showing. And then as we get uh, further into the drawing, here's where I'll use those little, that warm up that I used to add this detail into the plant. And that's gonna create interest within the composition. Whenever the textures change or the lighting changes, that is a point of um, interest and a little bit of a dynamic visual tension. So I'm gonna um, just take a break from this drawing Feel like it's good at a good stopping point and I'm just going to show you how far we've how far I've worked on it for now and then I'm going to show you how I to add color if you're interested in adding color to your drawing so this one is monochromatic I only use basically one color it's the blue but you can see there's a lot of different um, changes in the lights and shadows and the textures And then this is one I worked on at my um, at last night at my house. And so I'm just gonna show you how I added color onto this. I started with graphite and then I'm adding color onto it. So I started adding the yellow, um, and the orange and the red into the composition. And there's really not a lot of green in this composition, but I am going to use the green because the red and the green are complementary colors. And so that's something to think about too, just using colors in an intentional way. So I have um, orange, red, yellow, and a green. And then again, just using that, um, the sharpness of the line versus the softness of the line and putting those in relationship with each other will start to make things curve and thinking about if the bottle's curving, then my lines can be curving because it's describing the shape of the bottle. So it's like you're tracing the bottle again. It's that contour line mixed with the shadows and the shading. And when you put those things right next to each other, that's when things start to come to life. And another thing I didn't mention yet, but sometimes I will like to change the direction if I wanna get something that's awkward for my hand to do. Um, I change the way, the placement of my paper. Sometimes even upside down. So then the lines just always look fluid instead of uh, like you're uncomfortable when you're drawing. And that's one thing, again, I love about drawing is it's about feeling comfortable and getting into the flow. And so do what you need to do. But like you can see, I just moved my paper around to get this angle.
And building up the color is similar to that black, that dark and light, and the way that the relationship is happening. And so it's just always about the, the way two things are coming together and the relationship they have, or more, two or more things happening. Oops, there's my blue. And then going back to that darkening of the darkest darks, and which will pop those lightest lights. So I'm going to stop for now and show you how far and what this is like when we add the color to it. And then I'm going to work on it some more later tonight because this is a project that I will probably spend a couple hours on. And so I'm just going to show you with the color popped into it. And then I'll share the final piece in the video. And I hope that you will share your artwork with other people too because it usually brightens up people's day to see artwork. So please do that. So, hey everybody, that was super fun. Listen, we learned some drawing techniques, we did some thumbnail sketches, we practiced line quality, we made different compositions, and we made a really cool drawing. I hope that you really love the drawing that you made and that you'll be wanting to share it with other people. So once again, thanks to you, thanks to your family, Catharsis Media, APS and Any Given Child. See you next time.